my name is Dr. Rachel Venable, and I'm a boarded veterinary oncologist. And today we're going to talk about what are mast cell tumors. Mast cell tumors are actually the most common skin tumor or cutaneous tumor in dogs. And most people have never heard of them because we don't really get this. This is more unique to dogs and every now and then cats can get it as well. So it can actually look like anything. Usually it's a raised lump on the skin. It could be red, round, might actually be under the skin and you see that swelling pop up. And these actually cause a histamine release. It's because mast cells are actually a normal cell in the body. And so normally they're involved with allergic reactions or bug bites. But when they're mutated to form a tumor, we can see those same reactions. So like how, when you get a bug bite, how the skin turns red, it itches, it can go up and down in size. We can actually see that same thing with mast cell tumors, which is kind of crazy because most tumors don't itch or go up and down in size, but mast cell tumors definitely do. So what does it look like? Well, most of the time at home, you're just going to notice a new lump that just kind of popped up um, and then it doesn't go away. You know, a lot of times pet owners actually think these are some kind of bug bite, spider bite, but then it just stays there. And so if your pet does have a mass, you know, a swelling and it stays for a few weeks to a month, definitely want to get it checked out. Or if your pet has a lump that you notice is really growing over a couple of weeks, want to get that checked out too. So you definitely want to go see your vet. Generally speaking, your pet's going to feel fine. Um, they may or may not be bothered by the mass. Sometimes it can be itchy, so you might see them scratching more. Or if the tumor is getting really big, that can certainly start to make them uncomfortable. Or if the tumor is in, you know, kind of bad areas like under the armpit or around the knee where it makes it harder for them to walk. Those are things you might notice at home too. So what's your vet going to do when you bring them in? Well, generally we can diagnose this with a fine needle aspirate and cytology. So very non-invasive test. What your vet's going to do is take a small needle, like what we use to collect blood and just poke in that tumor. And then we're able to actually look at the cells on a slide under the microscope. And usually that's all we need to diagnose a mast cell tumor. Sometimes you have to biopsy, but generally these are pretty easy to diagnose. Once you know it's a mast cell tumor, it's a good idea to do staging. Staging basically lets us know, is this anywhere else in the body? So a lot of times with mast cell tumors, you'll want to check the local lymph node, and that's really going to depend depending on where that tumor is. So it's not as straightforward or just one lymph node per se. It depends on where it is on the body. And then a lot of times you might need advanced imaging too. So meaning checking internally to see how the abdomen looks, are the liver and spleen normal? Are there big lymph nodes there? Are there big lymph nodes in the chest? And, and your vet will be able to help guide you on these as well, because some tumors, if they're just really little and it's easily movable, those are going to be less concerning compared to a tumor that's pretty big, ulcerated and bleeding, really fixed to that deep tissue. We're going to be more concerned about those and your vet's likely going to recommend more imaging and things with those more aggressive looking tumors. So how can we treat this? Are there any treatments? Well, yes, there's actually lots of options. Um, it really depends on where the, the tumor is and how aggressive it is. Generally speaking, if we can, we like to do surgery, you know, get that tumor off the body. Also after surgery, you send that tumor to the lab, and then we're going to get a lot more information about it. The pathologist looks at it under the microscope and can let us know more details as far as is this tumor going to be more or less aggressive? And did we get it all? So sometimes you might need radiation. Sometimes you might even need chemotherapy, but remember animals tolerate things so much better than people. And, and there's a lot of different reasons for that. Some of it is we don't push them quite as hard, but generally speaking, animals will tolerate radiation and chemotherapy a whole lot better than we do. So just when you hear those words, don't automatically rule it out, you know, talk to your vet, talk to an oncologist and figure out, okay, what are the best options for my pet and my situation? So come check us out on our website at www.petcancercareconsulting.com, as well as check out our blog for more information on mast cell tumors, because there's so much I could talk about this for hours, honestly, but who wants to listen to that? So remember, a veterinary oncologist, we'd be happy to partner with your family vet to get you more information, and let's get the care that your pet deserves.